My name is Gary Hoffman Soto and I use Soto for my name because years ago it was just easier for people to remember. I'm a movement artist and teacher and uh, practitioner and student. We know that life influences art, period. If, if my wife leaves me, I, I make a drawing of it, I do a picture, I write a play, I make a song, I do a dance, you know, theater piece about it. That's life influencing my art. But Anna began in Dari and the Tamalpa work was about Anne, how I'm, how I'm in the studio doing my art can influence how I live my life. That if I'm doing this work with being conscious of things and taking things and transforming them, how can I take that out of the studio and apply that in my life? Could be anything I'm doing. Am I bringing some sense of uh, being awake, being conscious, being mindful, being aware of the action? So because we're in movement all the time, life is about movement. As Feldenkrais said, when movement stops, life stops. But even then, movement continues because you start to break down, you know, and turn back into dust. So movement is such a great metaphor in which to study being awake. So whether we use the word consciousness, conscious movement, Ah, what is that? Oh, I'm paying attention to what I'm doing. Mindfulness movement? Oh, my mind and body's connected, right? When I'm doing this, my mind is where my body is going. I'm not thinking about lunch, you know, or awareness, you know. Am I awake? Am I aware of what I'm doing? So all these terms are getting at the same thing, which is wake up, you know, and how can I apply this into daily life? But I'm not in daily life going, oh, I'm lifting my arm, I'm going to start the car now, my foot's got, you know, you practice, you practice, and then you go live your life. So the, 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 the dojo, the dance studio, are all the mat, are all uh, places to practice to apply into life. When I get up in the morning and eat, to have my breakfast, and then go to the, go to the park to do my practice, it's just like, it's like I, it's, it's, on, it's on the same par as eating. I do six Tai Chi forms, one with single fan, one with double fan, two forms with sword, and a swimming dragon, and then a classical Tai Chi form. So I, I do that about five days a week, six days, and then I do my floor work, four days, three, four days a week. If I'm teaching people and I'm asking them to, to learn new things and, and I'm doing a lot of improvisation and as it turned out somatic work, then I need to be doing that too. That uh, I need to practice what I preach. When I was a kid learning, playing in the basketball in the streets and sports and just being in the streets, there was a great expression. It was called, some people are talking and some people are walking. Let's go out on the court and see what you're saying, you know? And that was like so important that, yes, you know, I need to do what I'm asking people to do. In Buddhism, you have the sutras. In sutras, and in Christianity, they have the Bible. In Islam, they have the Quran. And these are writings of what supposedly Muhammad said, or the Buddha said, or Jesus said. These are translations of their words. Well, that translation... Somebody had to hear it, and it had to go through their filter and write it down. And then somebody read it and wrote it down in another language from another culture, in a whole other way of living. And this kept getting round and round for thousands of years. So what is written down may have nothing to do with what was said. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. In somatics, it's about the present moment, the body in the moment in movement. Now somatics doesn't have to include movement these days, but originally it was the body in the moment in movement. And that's our Bible. That's our sutra. That marriage of East and West is really uh, important for me in my work. For me as a person and, 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 and in my work. It's a wide range of people who are, are, are coming to work. And it's, it's different in different places. In, in South Korea, for example, there are a lot of, uh, there's a mixture of, some, of dancers who are looking to
to broaden their perspective a little bit and get out of just the technical aspect of it and, and, and work a little bit more from personal point of view. So there's that. But always there's a lot of people who are involved in therapy and want to expand themselves that way in their work. There's In South Korea, there always was, is a lot of nuns who come, Buddhist nuns, which is very interesting, you know, to... to get them into their bodies and, and, and how they respond. So it's really a wide range. And I like that because I think if I'm really experienced, I can learn a lot from a beginner. I can really, you know, get a lot. And if I'm a beginner, of course, I'm going to learn from people who are experienced, you know. So I like that play of, of a wide range. I do like working. I do like being with people. And I do like sharing my experience with people. Something comes, comes through me. And that's my experience. And that's all my teachers who were very generous with me. And even the ones who weren't and weren't good teachers, all that comes through, you know, and I'm able to relax and let that happen. You know, I, I, at this point, I don't plan. I just go, I have an idea. We're working on this. I go do it. But there's so much there that if I relax and open myself up to it, it, it becomes accessible to me. Whereas if I try to talk about it outside of that situation, I don't have that many ideas. So that's an interesting thing. It's where I feel very comfortable and relaxed, you know, even when it, it's not going right. I reflect always back to Anna because over those 40 some years I worked with her, she changed a lot how she was doing things. She was constantly changing and that was an adjustment to her age. So now I see myself mirroring that, you know, and having to do that. And, and the biggest thing is acceptance of it. I used to have these dreams of playing ping pong with uh, Lao Tzu. And he would ping by asking a question and I'd have to pong back with an answer. Or I would ping with a question and he would pong back with an answer. I had like six dreams over a two-year period of doing this. And in one of them, he served and said, you have to accept what is. And I had to think of it, I ponged back that, uh, yeah, and you accept it, and then you have to work with it. What surprises me about myself is I'm just this kid who grew up in a, a, a family that never owned its own home, and I've never owned my own home, who, uh, you know, grew up in in the streets and always was kind of on the edge of tipping over in the wrong direction or not, but hanging on because of sports and the fear of my father. <laughs> That's a big one. And, uh, you know, and then getting to this place where I can say this, that, you know, I've, I've touched and influenced, you know, and I'm not trying to blow smoke up my butt, but a lot of people in a, in a good way and had this uh, great, fortune in life to have traveled all over the world, taught, you know, in 21 different countries, in Asia, in the Middle East, in Europe, in Canada, in Mexico, and, uh, and I'm just this little simple guy, you know, and, and when I back, moved back here, my family really, some of them do know who I know my, what I'm doing and everything, but most of them don't. So I send videos out to them sometimes, you know, about my work and, and, the, but I'm just this funny uncle, you know, funny uncle Soto. And in reality, I'm just this kid from East San Diego, you know, who, who had incredible fortune, good fortune to be in the right place at the right time and being able to capitalize on that. And, uh, and, and, and as I said, beginning, it just goes back to my early basketball training. Just play the game, let it come to you, and when it comes, take it.